All right, let's dive right into the most important lesson. It's also the lesson that most couples struggle with. Putting this into action supports everything we're going to talk about from communication, affection, sex, making your marriage fun and exciting, and all the other topics. What am I talking about? Time. And by time I mean time alone together. The average couple can spend as little as one hour total alone per week. The average couple with kids, sometimes none. The average two people having an affair spend at least 15 hours per week together. Think about that. Those two people somehow managed to find 15 hours alone in spite of all their other commitments. When I work with couples, I ask for a mere eight hours per week. Remember when you were first together and you couldn't get enough of each other? You spent hours talking and laughing, learning about each other, what you cared about, what your dreams were, what your fears were. What most people don't realize is those things continue to change over time. And if we're not checking in and spending time alone, we are by definition growing separately and potentially growing apart. I don't know how many couples have come to me over the years on the verge of divorce who tell me there's no major issues, we've just grown apart. What grown apart means to me is that they were not spending enough time together. If you don't continue to connect throughout your life, you run the risk of being married to a stranger. And how can you work on communication? How can you work on affection or money issues if you never have the opportunity? I can explain everything I know about all of these topics, but unless you have time alone to talk to each other, be affectionate with one another, and enjoy each other, it won't work. The relationship between the two of you is the foundation of the marriage and family. If you guys don't have a relationship, everything else suffers. There's no way to have a relationship without spending time together alone. I mean, think about it. It is virtually impossible to be in love with someone that you're never alone with. Sure, you can love them, but be in love? No. When we're married, we spend a lot of time together as husband and wife, with friends and family, paying bills, taking care of the home. We also spend a lot of time as individuals in our separate jobs with separate interests. Many of us spend a lot of our time as a mom and a dad, spending time with the kids, family outings. But most of us spend very little time as a man and a woman together. This is often at the root of many of the complaints that bring couples to therapy. We just don't feel connected anymore. He doesn't pay attention to me. She's always mad at me. We aren't having enough sex. I know for a fact that many of these things are occurring because their priorities are off. In order, our priorities should always be marriage, kids, job, family and friends, etc. If the order gets mixed up, the whole thing could fall apart. When I ask for this, most couples look at me like, I've lost my mind. What about my job? I have to provide for the family. I don't see my kids all week. I have to spend time with them at night and on the weekends. I understand what it means to be a working couple with children. But if the marriage falls apart, it all falls apart. Your kids will not thank you if you put them first, but then get a divorce. I know that sounds harsh, but I've worked with lots of couples and I've asked them to do many things. I can literally get people to sell their house or quit their job before I can get them to go on a regular date. For instance, I worked with Joel and Diana for several months. As usual, we discussed the issues at the very beginning and they acknowledged that they spent very little time together. Over the next several weeks, we worked on their communication, their sex life, his anger issues, and their constant fighting over money. A few things got better, but overall they were stuck. Every week I'd ask, how was date night? They'd laugh, look a little guilty, and say, oh, we just can't seem to find the time. After a particularly tense session when he complained yet again about their lack of sexual activity, I laid it out for them one more time. Did you pay any attention to each other? What did you do to make her feel connected? What did you do to make him feel appreciated? And when did you do it? You don't spend any time together alone. They finally got it, began spending time together, and everything we had talked about over the last couple of months clicked. I see this pattern in couples I work with time and time again. Today I'm asking you, get your calendars out and schedule at least eight hours per week of alone time. In the next segment, I'll help you really understand what I mean by alone time together and give you some ideas on how to find that time on your calendar and what to do and what not to do with that time.